Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Ranger. In the last part, we reached the Go Rock Squad base in the middle of the Sector Mountains after having to do a little bit of messing around in a forest with some minor sub-objectives. And now it's time for us to get through this place. Notably, this place actually has another mechanic that walled me for a little bit as a kid. These glowing red tiles. If you step on one while it's red or it turns red underneath you, an alarm goes off and you're escorted back to the room before where we just started this video where you talked to Chris at the end of the last part. This is a lot of staying still, observing the pattern that the, pa uh, the panels glow in, and then walking across the gray ones while they are gray. I think the main reason I had trouble with this as a kid is I was very impatient, just in general. But on top of that, I wasn't very observant to what pattern was going on. I was just trying to predict where they were going to go instead of actually paying attention. This is probably the hardest screen right here, if only because you have to go through like two or three uh, sets of them vertically, which you don't have the screen space to see all of it once. So you just kind of have to make a gambit to an extent. And I think this is the screen that especially got me stuck for a good while as a kid. Like, so I hesitated. White, 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 what are you doing here? Tutors aren't allowed. Well, excuse me. Sneak into our base, will ya? Out you go. Well, I'll just get back there instantly. Another one of my favorite songs here, by the way. Uh, Ranger's soundtrack is really good, but it is at its strongest with some of the battle themes. Well, I guess we can't go back now. At this point, this dungeon becomes something else very familiar. Teleport mazes right out of Saffron Gym. You don't need to visit every room, but I should note, you can find a lot of pretty good Pokemon in here for Poke Assists. Magneton, for instance, is a really good recharger, as we've seen before. We got Ralts here, which is a newbie. Uh, Ralts, similarly to Curlia, teleports all over the place, but it does so much more often without warning compared to Curlia. I don't even think it has an attack, but it's worth getting all the same to an extent because, hey, Psychic Poke Assists, once again. Ralts moves by teleporting repeatedly. It apparently does not walk very often. If anything, walking into it to start the battle is the harder part of the battle. There is a pattern to get around here, but it's just kind of a maze. Hey, it's you again. You remember me, don't you? You don't remember? You really don't remember? Gah, I'm not taking that! Oh, yeah. The number times is like, what, the third time we fought you? you? You got a lot of Pokemon we're used to dealing with, but, uh, hey, at least you're still persistent. Don't ever forget this! Please remember me next time. I mean, once I recognized it was you, I remembered you. But now it's time for another new Pokemon. This is Swampert, the final evolution of Mudkip. This is a very good Pokemon to have around because A, very high level water assist. B, pretty good field move, but also it's a pretty dangerous fight. Uh, its main attack is a water elemental hyper beam essentially that comes out pretty quickly and does decent damage at about four. But yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot when we got 37, but that builds up. Swampert attacks by gushing blasts of water from its mouth like a waterfall. I believe you can find each of the Hoenn starters third evolutions in here somewhere. Uh, we've already seen Sceptile, we just found Swampert, and I believe right here is the final of the three, Blaziken. Blaziken's also easily the hardest of the three, because while it runs around pretty quickly, its attack is forward-facing fire kicks, similarly to Combuskin, only they come out a lot faster and do a lot more damage and they shoot a projectile forward. But any time it makes contact with your capture line, even if it jumps over you, it's probably going to do the attack, and at that point, uh, it's kind of hard to react in time. I guess the good thing about it, and I guess enemies in general, because I don't think I've talked about this period, enemies will not attack if they're completely off-screen. Uh, they will only attack if they're on-screen, I believe. That does mean that if they're only mostly on screen, they can still attack you, but it's worth noting all the same. Beware, Blaziken's sharp kicks come with flames that erupt from its toes. What we're looking for is a very particular room. I think this is actually the one right here where you have like three different teleport things. And I'm making sure I'm in the right room by coming in here to see this particular fight. <laughs> finally, finally your time has come. Our new style is finished using that outrageous new style the Gorak Squad can capture any Pokemon whether they like it or not. Every Pokemon in the world will now do our every bidding. My guy, you got two Mankeys and a Golem. That's not exactly threatening. I have a water Pokemon that can completely nullify it. Also, I can make them float. Compared to other teleport mazes in the series, like some of the gyms, certain rocket bases, self-co, things like that, I never honestly put in the effort to remember which path is the way to actually go here until I reach that three-pronged room because I just remember that from being a kid. 
All the others I've usually memorized work what goes where and have a pattern to figure out where I'm going from there. I'm not suited for the field of battle. I'm a drawn to my life and country to creating the perfect system. Good luck with that. But yeah, I, I, I always make sure I'm in the right room by finding this place and then adjusting from there. But also notably, there's another new Pokemon in here. This is Electabuzz. They're only findable in a few places in the game, so I'm grabbing this one now. If it has an attack, I forget what it is. Let's see. Like there was attacks by wildly discharging power can also recharge the stuff. So, okay, that's either the flashbang type move or it's the magnemite type move where there's just a brief field of electricity around it. I forget which. It's important to grab some of these Pokemon now because while they're not missable, you can only come into the Go Rock HQ this one time during the main story at least. So it's important to grab Pokemon like that now while you can, and they're easy to grab. And yeah, now that we're down here, we're on to the main plot. But there's a metal fence up there, so we need to find something that can use cut, and thankfully there is at least one of those nearby out here. Nope, oh, hi there. Hi Kyle, I was looking for you. I was ordered to assist your mission, but you know what? I would have come even if I wasn't ordered. <laughs> Thanks. We're here for the Sneasel because of their high level cut ability, which now allows us to come back up here, break that fence, and move on to the marathon of sorts. As a kid, when I got past the red panels, I flew through this area pretty smoothly until this section where things get a little dicey. I recommend having as many recharging Pokemon as you can. Not you two again. What do you want of us? If you want my autograph, you should just say it. Hmm, I know. You don't want my autograph. You want to have a go at us. You caught me by surprise last time, but this time I'm setting the phasers to rock. Camera up, come. Barbecue time. It's time for one-on-ones against each of the Go Rock quads once again. And they kind of one-up their previous fights. For instance, now I have to fight two camera ups. Which can get pretty busy if you don't quickly stun them in some regards, like using this or using mine in, and capturing either them both at once or one at a time, because having both of them spew lava at once is a nightmare of damage. I got beaten again. This is why I can never get better. I'm doomed to just be a cute, refreshing, stylish, beautiful, smart, rich, exquisite, stylish, and boring woman. It's so frustrating in existence. She said stylish twice. Who asked for your input? You so cheese me off! <laughs> That's probably my favorite joke in the game on the whole. Big brother, open up! I'm facing a career crisis! One down, three to go. Thankfully, you're given a break to go use a save point and go find another recharging Pokemon if you need to, which I recommend doing. So you're the clowns messing with my cute sister's head? Here's my thanks, the Gorok Squad soon getting the means to make Pokemon do exactly what we want. Your rangers are gonna be out of a business overnight. The first thing I'm going to do is get sick and rich by working Pokemon to the bone. That's my dream for now. It's all about the cash, Flash. If you got the stash, there's nothing that you can't do in life. Hey, you'll be out of a job. I could consider hiring you, eh? But before that, I might be lazy, but even I won't let anyone get in the way of my dreams. I don't care much about away games, but I can't lose at home. Besides, there's bonus painted for me. All it takes is to beat you down. Call out your boy, Slack King. The ending begins now. Clyde is, in some regards, the hardest of this set. If only because he has three very different Pokemon that interplay in very annoying ways. Because you got Slack King punching the ground, you got Slack off moving around pretty slowly doing that very fast attack, but then you got Vigoroth over there moving very quickly and trying to upset anything else you do. I recommend getting Slack off and Slack King off in a corner if you can, and then trying to get Vigoroth separated from them, either by capturing them first or second. Uh, Vigoroth's main attack is a relatively speedy, compared to the other two at least, charge attack that will very easily mess up anything you try to do capture-wise. One punch of Vigoroth's clawed paw is enough to cut a metal fence. I lost both ends of one way in home series? Me, Clyde of the Gorok Quads. That's just not happening, but it happened it did. 
But that doesn't mean my dream of getting stinking rich off Pokemon's gone belly up. Your Go Rock Squad, is money what you're after? Well, at the very least it is for me, Clyde. But why are boss me the Go Rock Squad? I wouldn't have the foggiest notion. So I guess there's not much communication at the high rungs of the squad? Garrett, bro, open up. Things went sideways on me. All right, guess it's Garrett time. I'm only just now noticing that their doors are actively modeled off of their clothing. That's kind of a neat detail visually. I have been hoping to see you again. As a result of your meddling, my dusk factory was destroyed. And as a result of that, I'm losing the boss's trust. Actually, I am grateful that you've caused me so much grief because I'm using that anger. That anger is motivation as... Motivation? Yeah, as motivation! Enough of talking like some gen. I'm motivated to hit back. I'm grateful for what you did, but that doesn't mean you're forgiven. Here's your payback for all the humiliation I suffered. Caesar, do your thing. It's revenge. Get motivated. This one's sort of combining the fight against the Scyther and Caesar we did back in the Dusk Factory all into one, but now there's two Scythers. This is why I was really hoping I would find, and I'm glad I did find, the Blaziken, because it completely nullifies this fight in the regard of the fire stuns, especially the Scythers in place long enough if you get a good loop going. That you can circle around them and get them out of the way and then focus on the Caesar on its own, probably? It's still a little rough because they hop around so irregularly, but also so quickly that it's basically unpredictable. But it at least helps make this an easier fight. Also, you really get to see how much longer a high-level Poke Assist lasts compared to their lower-level uh, versions. Because this is, what, already 30 seconds plus? Lasts about 45 seconds to a minute. I've already forgotten the timer because that's all the way down there in the bottom right corner of the way I edited this. All right, three Go Rock quads down, one to go. <sighs> it's so unlike me to get so excited. If only I had the power style that the boss completed, I would have won. The power styler is already completed, then why don't you have one? Only our boss has the power styler. Though its performance is incredible, only one's been made. You should consider yourself lucky. However, if you think you've changed anything by defeating me, you're sorely mistaken. And after a very quick save break, time for us to go after the final of the four members. Uh, but you need to be careful down here, because while there's a save point in a magneton, there's also a bit of a problem in Metang. Remember how Beldum back at the Dusk Factory was a very small Pokemon that did a very sudden charge? This is that, but now it's larger! And it takes many more loops. Having a fully charged Minin helps a lot here, because that is a very large six-pronged star of electricity, as you've seen. But if you're not careful, that thing will charge at your capture disc on site and do pretty decent damage. Matang charges with its rugged body. It can break a hard obstacle. And on top of that, in here are some more Pokemon you're gonna want to capture, because even though some of these are statues, some of these Machamps are real, and you're gonna want some fighting Poke Assists coming up. This fight is made easier though because of the Metang, because, well, Psychic Titan. Machamp's attack is the same as Machoke's, except it's just bigger, faster, and stronger, I think. The walking several punches across. It might also have a charge attack now that I think about it. Machamp can pulverize even huge boulders using the power of its incredible body. Some of the final stage evolutions for Pokemon in this game are a little weird in that sometimes they just have the one attack the lines generally had, but sometimes they have multiple. It really depends on the Pokemon in question and the bias it has. Pokemon Go Go, welcome to our secret base. Even if you're in a hurry, stop in your tracks. Open your ears to our melodic attacks. The rhythm of rage pounds the ground. Let the melody of ambition rise to the skies. If you don't know us, we'll cure your ignorance. Billy, Garrett, Clyde, Tiffany, 
the Go Rock, Rock Squad's hot prospect band of key shaker and taker celebrities. A name was heard and never forgotten. The Go Rock Quads. Had to get one more in for the road, didn't you? Welcome to our secret base. We were expecting you. Do you remember what I said about the Go Rock Squad changing the history of the Rangers? That's fantastic news, isn't it? So why do you keep trying to mess us up? Think about it, the Go Rock Squad's supposed to be messing with the Rangers, but it's been the other way around. That's just not right. What's going on here? Where's the Superstellar you took from the Professor? Look around, you've been cornered. Drop your feudal resistance and return the Superstyler. And where's your boss, Gordor? If it was something we borrowed, we'd give it back. But we took that thing. Why would we need to give it back? And even though the Power Styler's been made, Professor Hastings' Super Styler is still an important sample. It's not something we're about to just hand over without a fight. And you're also mistaken. It's not like our boss is hiding from the likes of you. He's in the Fiore Temple working on the final experiment. But knowing that's not going to help you now. It's way too late for that. <laughs> I've had it past here with your meddling antics. That's not all. You beat my brothers Clyde and Garrett and my little sis Tiffany not just once, but twice each. It's about time I settled up accounts with you for my beloved siblings. It's payback time. Tyranitar, it's time for you and your brothers. Feel my anger and let's rhythm of rage pound the ground. Oh, that's Clyde's... thing. All right, Billy's fight here is pretty rough because it's three Pokemon. I don't think you could have fought it all before this. Some of these can show up in the Sector Range Mountains otherwise, but here's the deal. Larvitar, to my memory, just has the same bite attack that Raticate had back when. Cupitar has a charging attack that it can throw at any time it sees the capture line or capture disc. Tyranitar has the same shockwave attack as Salamence, but also Hyper Beam that I can throw out with very little warning, and even several times in a row. Use whatever Poke Assists you've brought with you up to this point, because they're all going to help you in some form, especially if they are specifically weak to it, but this is arguably one of the hardest fights in the game. Especially because arguably the most annoying member isn't even the one that has the most loops you need. Cupitar taking more than Tyranitar is a choice, and it's very deliberate, so it's made to be harder. And I'm not saying the game shouldn't be hard, but it's very frustrating with how the game's difficulty curve is due to every loop needing to be made at once uh, on any given boss fight, like I've talked about before. Again, if you haven't been gelling with Ranger 1, I really recommend just playing Shadows of Almia and trying that out because it's such a better system on the whole. This fight can be rough. Hell, Minin doesn't even help too much with it because some of the Pokemon are vulnerable to it, others aren't, because Pupitar is technically considered a ground type, I believe, by this. Even though I think Tyranitar is considered, uh, is it Dragon? I forget the other type it has. It's a good time to level up, though. This fight took me a while on a first playthrough. It didn't quite wall me like some of the other ones have, but it still was annoying. Oh, right! Pupitar can also cause rocks to fall from the ceiling! I forgot about that! This fight sucks! Larvitar is small, but its bite is powerful. It can easily chomp down a wooden fence. Tyranitar shoots a beam from its mouth. It also shakes its body to trigger quakes. Pupitar tackles with its spiky body and makes numerous rocks tumble down. I didn't expect this. You are good. But all right, I lost. So I'll tell you, the stolen Superstellar is stored somewhere in a lab here. So do feel free to look. Please take it back to your professor as a souvenir of this adventure. But before you go, there's just this one little thing. This hideout self-destruct switch. Oh, great. Click! <laughs> no one ever accused the four of us of being fair. Wait a second, that's how you deal with losing? Yeah, yeah, I know, sore loser and pathetic and all that. But I don't care how uncool this looks. I'm not gonna let you mess with that, I, I, I mean, the boss's dreams. Because that's the law among us siblings. The law for the Go-Rock Squad. But having said that, this is it for us dedicating our all for the boss. Even though we did it for him, the boss won't ever forgive us for blowing up the base. But that's fine. We did what we had to do. Even if it means he no longer considers us family. From now on, the four of us will make a new beginning. Right back from zero again. We don't know what we'll start yet, but our star will shine again. Billy! Garrett! Clyde! Tiffany! We're, we're the Go-Rock Go Rock Quads! quads. Alright, goodbye, goodbye, Rangers! Rangers. Great. Kyle, we have to get out. Leader! 
Good job, you two. You're not hurt, are you? Thanks to the big ruckus you two kicked up, I was able to recover the Super Styler. Mission clear! We need to run! What's happening here? The walls are coming down. It's the Gorok Quads. They set off a self-destruct system. They fled through that square portal right afterwards. But they said that a boss Gordor was in the Fiore Temple. Give me a report later. We have to get out of here now. Forget about the escaped criminals. Your lives are more important. Both of you, quick, dive through that portal now. When you get out, follow Cameron or Alita's orders. I still have my mission to rescue the Pokemon here. Listen to me, you go after Gordor. Kyle, we have to get out now. I don't think there's a timer here, but I wouldn't recommend staying around anyway. Not like there's a lot of level design for you to crawl through to begin with, though, I guess. I've never checked what's in the butt top right there. Probably a door that the Gorocks went through or something. You two, over here, quickly. We got word from Spencer. You two all right? We're okay, but our leader's still inside. Cameron, Alita, please help. Please help our leader. Cameron and I are on a mission to rescue you two. That's what we promised Spencer. He anticipated that you would say something like that, too. You two have a mission assigned to you by Spencer. Now quick, hang on to me. We have to return to Windtown right now. Let's go. I really hope this exploding doesn't impact the natural environment nearby. The Go Rock Squad's secret base has been destroyed. It's no exaggeration to say that it was a fantastic success that will go down in Ranger history. As a result of your latest exploits, you have taken another giant step forward, Kyle. For all that you have achieved, I hereby certify you as Ranger Rank 10. Sadly, we don't get a super fancy new animation for this because this is the final rank up in the game, sadly. Kyle was promoted to Ranger Rank 10. Now that you've obtained Ranger Rank 10, your party can be expanded. Kyle, you are now permitted to be accompanied by up to seven friend Pokemon in addition to your partner. Which is going to be important mostly in post-story. Cameron, is Spencer safe? Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. I bet Spencer's already finished up and taking a nap somewhere. It's Spencer, Cameron, not you. He wouldn't be sneaking a nap anywhere. But Cameron's right. You don't need to worry about Spencer, I guarantee it. He appears when the situation's at its most dire, and he's gone by the time you notice. He's always been that way. And now, for Spencer's apprentices, I have a mission of critical importance. Thwart the plans of Gordor, the Gorok Squad's boss, who is thought to be holed up in Fiori Temple. Alrighty. Your mission is to prevent Gordor from succeeding in his awful scheme. Gordor is thought to be holed up in the Fiori Temple. Be safe! I'll be looking forward to hearing about what happened when you return. There's no more advice I can offer you. I can only send you off with a smile. Don't worry about Spencer. We actively have to now walk back up to the top of the Sekra Mountain Range. Thankfully, you don't have to walk all the way back up, because now that we've done that mission, the Snorlax is no longer blockading this pathway, which allows you to skip most of the forest straight to where the Charizard fight was uh, last part. So you at least get a decent shortcut out of it. This also might be why I continuously forget the forest section exists, because you're literally allowed to skip it afterwards. And also, now the Snorlax has moved into this cave. Nothing seems to awaken it. Hmm. Eh, I'm sure we'll be able to capture one eventually. So, this is the time if you need to do any grinding to increase your line length and HP to do it with the shift trees over in the Sekra Forest. If you even can at this point, I actually forget to let you explore all that. Because you're coming up on the end of the main story, so if you're underleveled, you might be in trouble in some regards. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 16, we start the end game. See you guys then.